When I was a, a kid and growing up uh, with a speech impediment, just the thought of speaking to a group of people would send a cold chill through my body. Then every day I'd go to school with two prayers. One, I wouldn't get called on, and two, I wouldn't get picked on. And most days, my prayers were answered. And as I traveled from elementary school all the way to graduate school, things got a lot better. But it was in graduate school that I realized that I had dyslexia and dyspraxia, or dyslexia of the body, and Asperger's syndrome. And discovering all this, I decided I was going to heal these situations. And I did, and they started getting better. But the better they got, the more I realized I had another challenge that was at least as equally daunting. And that was my ability to have successful emotional encounters, these interactions that we have with people where we're vulnerable and authentic, when we connect with someone. I couldn't do it, and it certainly wasn't fun. But as I discovered how much of that was a challenge for me, I started realizing that it was a challenge for a lot of other men. And I decided that you know, I was going to change this also. But I wanted to change it for myself, and I wanted to change it for other men. Because I knew how hard it is for a lot of guys to connect to the people that we really care about. And needing to change this, or wanting to change this, I decided that I needed to work with men. And that was scary. But I took a deep breath, and I helped start my first men's group. And that first night, I went to that first meeting. That was one of the scariest nights of my life. Because I didn't know how to be vulnerable. I didn't know how to be authentic. And I knew I needed to be in this group. But quickly, as the group started, and everyone started to speak, it got easier and easier to just communicate and connect. And by the end of the night, it was actually fun. And over the course of that group, I realized that, you know, as men, we're not bad, we're not broken, and we're not doomed. And being a man is not a pathology. <laughs> what it really is, is being stuck in a model that's too small for us. A model that we've inherited that does not work for us. And now, to understand that model, we need to go back to its origin. Go back to the tribe. So when we were in a tribe, we were raised by the tribe or the community, the extended family, our parents, and maybe even our siblings. But all that started to change about 10,000 years ago. We left the tribe for the farm. But 200 years ago, we left the farm for the factory. And at that point, everything had changed. Because not only was the community gone, not only was the extended family gone, but most particularly, our fathers were gone. And without the fathers there, because they were at work 40, maybe 80 hours a week, the mothers were home. They were raising the kids, the boys and the girls. But they were also modeling and teaching the girls and the boys how to be emotional. Now, the impact of that is that over the last 200 years or more, we slowly but consistently skewed what it is to be emotional as a man towards the feminine. It's not a conspiracy. You know, actually, women want us to get this. One, it'd make their lives a lot easier. <laughs> but also, you know, they love us, and they feel the stress that we have struggling with this, be it you know, our mothers to our wives. And it is a struggle for us. And it's as if we're wearing this emotional dress, and it's tight. And as guys, we don't wear dresses. But that's all we have to wear, so we wear it. And we've worn it for so long, we've grown to accept it. But what happens is, is that it confines us. And it doesn't allow us to really reach out and connect to people we really want to connect to. And what happens with that is it reduces stress. And one of the things that we do is we try to find ways to ameliorate the stress, or at least in an indirect way, get what we want. And one of the things that we often do is go for emotional junk food. You know, the 24-7 uh, sports and entertainment, the 24-7 you know, purchasing any tool or toy, toy we might want, and then the 24-7 internet porn. But none of that gives us the connection we want, just more stress. And then what happens is, you know, we're, we're looking for a model to, to guide us on how to be a man. And what we're given is two simplistic opposing models. Either we're this hypo masculine, nice, sensitive guy, or we're this hyper-masculine, macho, angry jerk. <laughs> and, you know, I've never met a man that was one or the other, and like any double-blind, it's a trap. We can't 
grow, we can't experience life when we're stuck in the double bind. And that adds to the stress. Now, one of the particular stressors I had was emotional PTSD. Now, PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, is first physiological before it is emotional. So I would be having an emotional interaction with someone, talking to this person, and my heart rate would be racing, the stress hormones would be racing through my body, my mind would be racing, and I couldn't connect to my own feelings, and I certainly couldn't connect to another person. And, and every time that happened, it would anchor in that physiology a little more into my body. And it made it a little harder to get out of my body. Now, I eventually did, but I got really good at doing that, so it really locked it in. Now, all this came together for me about 25 years ago when I really started realizing I was missing some. And that was when I was dating Angela. Angela was this attractive, smart, successful woman that just loved me. And one night, I was sitting on my couch, and she looks at me and says, Owen, I want to feel you. I want to connect to you. And, and I don't feel your emotions. And being the good guy that I was, I explained to her what that was and, and analyzed it. And, <laughs> and then being really patient, she looks and says, Honey, I want to feel you. I want to connect to you. And wanting to, to emphasize what I said before, I explained it further and analyzed it further. But fortunately, this emotional two-by-four hit me over the head and woke me up. And I realized what she wanted. But when I realized what she wanted, I also realized I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I never had a model. I never saw a man doing it. I never saw a man successfully connecting to his own experience or his own emotions and to his partner and deepening and furthering the relationship. And I never had any training in it. I also knew that the problem wasn't her. It wasn't me, and it wasn't the relationship. The problem was the model. And it's the problem for a lot of us guys, because like me, a lot of the men that find our free groups or do our trainings come because we've hit our emotional glass ceiling. So as guys, we don't do things unless we think we can win at it. And we're not going to enter, enter into a relationship unless we think we can be successful at it. So we want to do it but we're missing tools in our tool belt. We can't build that relationship or connection that we want. So we hit this ceiling. We want to be up here, but we're stuck here. And so that last 20%, maybe 10%, you know, this gap, we can't learn it from women. It'd be easier if we could for both of us, but we can't. To get this gap filled, we need to go back to the tribe. In the tribe, when we were men, we go out in hunting parties. And on these hunting parties, we take along the older boys. And we might be out for a few days, but we'd connect. We'd tease each other, we'd support each other, we'd hold each other accountable. We created a brotherhood. And that brotherhood taught us what we needed to learn to be emotional as men. We, they taught us that emotional masculine intelligence. And in this culture today, unless you're in school, with the military, you probably don't have brotherhood. And without brotherhood, you really can't learn this gap. Now, that's the key component of our groups. But with that, we also have a, a simple protocol, which is like confidentiality. We also have this secret ingredient that we don't realize that we have. And that's our genome is 99.9% .9 the same genome we had in the tribe. Which means that we have this instinct on how to be emotional as a man, how to connect to someone as a man. But the secret to that is that we can't really germinate this dormant seed in us unless we are with men. It's like we need to go off and be with men to discover this, to see this, to model it with others, to practice it, to get reinforced. And once we, that, we start doing that, we start closing this gap. So it's not uncommon for a man to come back from a previous meeting where he tells us a story about how he went home after the last meeting. And like so many relationships, you know, they started a discussion and they were button heads. But this fella hung in there, using what he learned with the group, and not so much from his head, but from his gut, 
he started communicating in a new way. And this relationship opened up. Six hours later, they end the relationship and they come back. And they come back with the romance, the passion, the compassion, and the humor that they had when they first fell in love. And when he's telling us this in the group, we're always moved by what this man has done and what he's accomplished for him and for his whole relationship. One of the most moving experiences I've had was a couple years ago. Uh, a group of guys in Chicago asked us to come and teach a class so that they could do a group like ours. And we said, sure. And they said, would you mind speaking to our colleagues on Monday morning? And we said, sure, we'd do that. So I gave a little introduction, and Brad, my co-lead, spoke about the impact that the group has had on him. And he shared this conversation he had with his younger son, Reed. Right before leaving for the trip, Reed, sa Reed says, Dad, you're going to be great. And sensing that his father didn't really get the impact of what he was saying, he said, Dad, you are meant to do this work. And at that point, tears are running down Brad's face. They're running down my face, because I know how important that was for Brad. And I looked through the audience of the deans, professors, and administrators at the University of Chicago, and I didn't see a dry eye with the men or the women in the audience. We all want men to connect. And as men, we really do want to connect. And if we don't get this, we risk having lives and relationships that are mediocre at best. But when we can rid ourselves of this old model that we inherited and co-create this new model with brotherhood, a new model of masculine emotional intelligence, we as men are free to really connect in a way that we've never been able to connect. But also, women are free too. They're free from being solely responsible for all the communication, all the emotions, and the relationship itself. But the bonus is, the boys of today get to grow up to be the men of the future where their emotions become their superpower. And we can't do this, we can't create this emotional revolution unless we get everyone joining in. And for men, that means taking the risk of maybe joining one of these free groups or starting one. And for the women who are often the emotional experts in the relationship to support men in doing this. So my, my wish is that, oh, I got a lot, but one of them is that, that all the fathers can have the experience that Brad had. That your son sees who you are, not only honors you for who you are, but honors your mission in life. And we know that only comes because that father has made a deep connection with the son. And the bonus there is that son, that boy, is set up to do that for his son. Thank you.